Hello everyone, this is Showtime Woman 2. The name John Glenn probably sounds familiar to most of you. He's most famous by being a Mercury astronaut, a part of the original American space program where he was chosen to be the first American to orbit the Earth. This part of his life was wonderfully portrayed in the famous movie The Right Stuff. If by some chance you haven't seen it, I recommend that you do. All of the Mercury program astronauts came from the fighter pilot community, but this part of their career is generally less known than their participation in the space race. John Glenn had the most interesting career of them all prior to joining the space program. He volunteered for the Navy pilot training during World War II, but he eventually elected to join the Marine Corps. His unit ended up taking part in the Marshall Islands campaign, Glenn flew the F4U Corsair, and by the end of the war he had 57 combat missions in his logbook. He never had a chance to meet enemy fighters, but flew air-to-ground missions instead. The missions were not without dangers, however, because his aircraft was hit by ground fire many times. After the war he continued his military career, which included being based in mainland China in 1947. There he flew patrol missions, but without any combat. In February 1953, he was sent to fight in the Korean War, this time flying the F-9F Panther. He flew 63 combat missions. Since Panther was not able to fight Communist MiG-15s on equal terms, Navy and Marine units equipped with this aircraft were flying mostly air-to-ground missions without much opportunity to shoot down enemy fighters. And once again, Glenn experienced being hit by ground fire a lot. This even led to a nickname All Magnet Tail, or simply Magnet Ass. But none of these incidents ever forced him to abandon his airplane. His opportunity to shoot down Mix finally came in June 1953, when his request for an exchange tour with the US Air Force was approved. He joined the 25th Fighter Interceptor Squadron flying F-86 Sabre. But it was becoming apparent that long-running peace talks might soon succeed in ending the war. Glenn complained that he might not get his chance to fight the MiGs, and as a result, his squadron mates painted the name MiG Mad Marine on his aircraft. However, the final days of the Korean War were so intense that Glenn got his chance to confront the MiGs after all. His first officially confirmed kill came on 12 July 1953, flying near the Yalu River. His flight spotted two MiG-15s flying low towards Chinese airspace. UN aircraft were not allowed to cross the border, but a loophole existed. An already initiated engagement with an enemy fighter could be continued across the border, and Glenn decided to use that. Glenn's wingman caught up with one of the MiGs, while Glenn shot his MiG right over the runway.
kill number two came on 19 July 1953. Glenn was leading a flight of four. The element leader was a recent ace, Henry Puttleman. Number four in the formation was none other than John Boyd, who would later become a guru of air fighting. Boyd aborted due to a technical problem and the flight continued as a threesome. At one point, Glenn spotted four MiGs crossing the Owl River and decided to attack them. Four turned out to be 16, and Glenn found himself with a MiG-15 on his tail. Glenn's wingman, Lt. Jerry Parker, shot the MiG down, but his engine ingested MiG parts. Two Sabres then turned south to escort the damaged airplane back home. Another flight of six MiGs appeared and Glenn opened fire out of range to scatter them. The fight resulted in Glenn and Buttleman each shooting down a MiG. Glenn second and Buttleman seventh. Glenn's final kill came on 22nd July. He and his wingman Sam Young attacked two MiG-15s. Glenn shot down the leader while Young shot down the wingman of Glenn's tail. Interestingly, this happened to be the last MiG kill of the Korean War.
Airplane continued his career as a test pilot, achieving the first ever transcontinental supersonic flight, flying from coast to coast in an F-8U Crusader. Eventually he was selected for the Mercury program, despite the fact that he was already 38 years old at the time. I hope you liked the video, be sure to press the like button if you did. If you're able to, you can support the channel on Patreon to assure future content. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and keep watching Showtime Moment 2.